Okay, now we're gonna go look at one of my best houses that I've done in ages. It's called the Vesper Casa. We got lots of shade on this one. So I'm gonna step up here right off the bat, point out these beautiful windows. This is some leaded glass windows we're starting with. We're making all this from scratch. This is effectively intended to be a, a, a I might say just a decorative element, but it gives it a flair that we're going after. We're using the Torx head screws on these. You could actually pull these units out and replace them if you wanted to later. Part of our movement has been to units that can be removed and replaced because sometimes the windows are so valuable that if for some reason you want to change them, you can pull them out and move them rather than destroy them, getting them in and out. So that's the plan on these. This is all made to fold down while it's being transported. Then when it gets to the location, you can actually go ahead and drop your anchor bolts in and anchor that up above. But the whole top folds down for transport. The floor unbolts and effectively what we do is pull this off, pull this off, fold that down, unbolt that, put it on trailer and move it on down the road. It's that simple. A little slower than that, but it's that simple. All you see above you is all three quarter inch solid lumber, a decking. In this case, that's just from the underlayment that it was on it in its life as a roof the last time. And then below, you have some beautiful tight grain wood in this case, all being used for the upper deck. And the custom de designed, this was not original. And sadly, the piece that was in here was already broken once, but it got broken again. And we can't save it. Can't find anything this big. So we're gonna have to make it two pieces. Ah. Now this is a sweet, sweet house. Antique fur uh, furnishings in the kitchen that we did not provide. She had these already. She brought us a number of things she wanted us to work with. The bottoms underneath the, the benches, she brought those that are from India, they're teak. Um, I have a number of them in here. Uh, I built the whole stairwell and everything because she also brought me some deer antler. And so as I got to building it, she kept bringing me more and I got elk antlers. And the next thing I know, we had enough that we went ahead and did this whole beautiful railing, all with antlers that she brought in from Colorado and from Texas. And we have what normally would never happen because I would never have this sort of thing in stock, a very organic stairwell. This is grapevine that we had off the property mixed with some, uh, I think this is actually um, Bodark, but it actually doesn't look quite like that right now. Um, we have a mix of about seven or eight species on here, including longleaf pine, live oak, and the same thing with the sitting area. This was all cut out of some pieces of mesquite, and I had these in stock already. So I just went over there and got them. That needs to be shaved off and brought them over here and we actually sanded them down and they'll still be sanded again and then oiled and then waxed. And that's what's still to happen on this. <clears throat> this lets you have about three or four people to sit for dinner if you want. So you have more people to sit back here, but if they're not around, it's just you, you can sit over here. This is a unique piece up here and most people will never be able to guess what it is, but this is actually just some things that are just good for conversation pieces. So it's a dark texture piece of glass that keeps you from seeing anything on the other side. That's the shower and the bath. Let's the air flow through it, but if you look really close, this in its past life is where the lid was. When you lifted up the lid, you pulled up the sewing machine. And this is an old sewing machine bottom, and we showed how we could re-purpose um, it. I think it's the word they use nowadays. And this is on a beautiful piece of wood here, just natural edge. But that's, and that's another one of the pieces that she brought us that she wanted us to incorporate. And this is using some newer cedar that I had sliced and diced from some trees. Quite a composition, actually. The house is extremely unusual in that I've never done a countertop that's all in the metal um, in one of my houses. This is not clean by any means. It wasn't prepped for us to come in and do this little filming, but stainless steel top. We repainted all of this from a rusty back into a white and then gave it a little bit of a slight sanding to give it a little bit of an old look again. And then this was rebuilt and brought to us. And it's actually going to be a functioning old stove. 
although that doesn't stay very stuck. Um, but this is all going to clean up beautiful white again. And this is the refrigerator. It's been all rebuilt, a General Electric. It's going to have a compressor right here in the top. It's been all rebuilt. And it's going to be a gorgeous piece as well as functioning, just beautiful. And this is an old pan, spice pan. I mean, a bread pan. We're going to use it for a spice rack. The bathroom, most people don't get this, but we actually kept the door knocker just in case somebody's taking too much time. It's also got a mail slot in case they want to live in there. There's actually a mail slot at the bottom. Most of them don't have that either. But, you know, some people have to spend a lot of time in the bathroom. It is a woman's house, so we'll see what happens. Uh, this kitchen right here, you'll see again, we use some really nice natural cut edges. And we use mesquite in here. It's actually got under counter storage and then even an under counter storage secret space underneath that. The back on this is very unusual. It's an insulated porch. But look at this door first from the inside. This is a piece right here. It comes out to a porch. This folds down for transport. All these pieces come off. These panels come off. And then windows and screens go on top. First the screens, then the tax man comes. And then, after the tax man leaves, there's windows that go in that fill in the spots where the screens were. So that, in effect, you only get taxed as a screen porch. So that panel comes out, that panel comes out, that panel, this panel, and this panel come out, and the posts come off, and it all folds up for transport. There'll be a door on that end, and this will all be beadboarded or finished out in some sort of wood finish. So in the end, this would be the back porch on the back of the Casa Vesper. Now, the front porch and the back balcony, they're equally as delicious. But you have to use your imagination on this one. We'll meet you around on the front porch. Okay. As we go on this house, this would be the front view. That'll be the back. And then all the way around, and then all the way around, ooh, you sure tell the wind came up. Here's the balcony. The balcony is a really nice feature of this house. The side doors were actually part of the original bottom of a set she brought us from India. It's out of teak. And the bars in the front you see, those were actually pieces from the bars on the door. We added the spindles and built the whole front porch like that and put all these corbels in. That's all separate, it's just a composition of different pieces and parts. And same thing with the little parts over the windows. This again all folds up. That stays on for transport. It's built on there that well that we just leave it on. And that way somebody can come out and watch the stars and be able to sit out there and have a cup of coffee in the morning and watch the morning and the sunset. It's designed to be the most beautiful, romantic little spot for one person, really. Two can make it. We've had three out there with any trouble, but it's fine. We've got pictures of three women out there and it'll hold anybody. That's not a problem. Just a little crowded. But that's up in her half bath. And on the other side is the master bedroom and the upstairs of the Casa Vesper. Or Vesper Casa. Let's go ahead inside and take one last look and we'll go ahead to the upstairs. Okay, up, up, up and away into the land of horns and vines and dreamland. A very unusual dreamland. We even have our own stained glass and our own angel. This is actually the owner's brother's angel. He passed away and this was sent, part of his belongings was sent to live in this house. And so we got a little spot already made for it. This is going to be the bedroom off this end. The bedroom is half of the upstairs, better than that, three quarters of it. It's unusual for us to use as much upstairs, but in Texas, if it's under five foot eight, it's only storage space. So that's about somewhere right in here. And so most of this is storage space, actually. It's not living space. We just want to store our bedroom up here and uh, a few other things like that. Now, pieces that she gave to us that she wanted integrated into it. This was a beautiful piece from India, the wrought iron. It has, as we darken the place up, this is for plants if you want, but it also closes up if you want to be able to sleep in the daytime. And then this is actually a warehouse in Quincy, Illinois, an Anheuser-Busch warehouse. And this was a um, 
window in the top of it. I had five at one time. It's the last of a set. But this will be set up really more for just a place for her to be able to look at it when she's going to sleep at night. When these are open, this provides us a lot of airflow and it's essential for this thing to cool itself, for the house to kill itself all the time. As we go back to the other side, you'll see the beautiful other pieces she brought in. This is one of the lamps she brought in she wanted us to use. And then on this side, what's very unusual is we're going to actually have a half bath over here. This is going to have a sink, a nice vanity. This will actually come off of here and then hook over another place if you want to take and do your makeup. You actually be able to have fresh air blown across. There's going to be another throne, just like in my house, right here for sitting down and doing your clothes, getting dressed, but also with the seat that raises up so you have a little place to go pee at night, which is much more important after 50. And then finally, this is the door out to the balcony. And the balcony is actually in teak. And these are beautiful teak windows. You bring it in, you just put your old locket if you want. Nobody gets in that way. It also has, and this will have screens on it before we're done. So you'll be able to just go ahead and put this shut, or put your screen shut, and have a screened in window. Still allow your airflow. Now I'm going to go out, and you'll get to say hello from down below. And we'll go ahead and kind of conclude our little tour of tiny Texas houses, Manifestation Bay. And this is what we're manifesting at the moment. This is my first tiny Texas house's balcony. It's meant so she can come out here, have a little seat, separate herself from the world, open up her flaps, and be able to let the air and the breeze flow through. Be able to sit and have a little coffee, watch the world go by, or sit in the evening and think about all the things that we have to be thankful for. Especially if you live in a house as beautiful as this. This will still have one more roof we haven't finished yet. that will fold down to protect these windows. We have a bottom roof that folds down. That all unbolts and it all ships. Folds up, locks up. It's ready to go for the next generation after we're gone. And then perhaps if they don't like where it's at, when the next generation comes along, they can pick it up and move it again. Remember, pure salvage living, it's a renaissance in thinking about the resources we're leaving our children for the next seven generations. Thank you for visiting. Let these seedlings of what I do plant in your great minds so that you can create even better long after I am gone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a great day. Thank you.